The MX-30 was a pretty unremarkable little EV. Mazda didn't really sell very many of them because of its limited electric range. But I think that's a shame because I always quite liked the Mazda MX-30. It was fantastic to drive, it looked great, and it was full of so many quirky little elements. So I'm so pleased that Mazda weren't ready to ditch this model. They've given it a new option of engine, and that is a plug-in hybrid. And it's a pretty cool engine at that. But is it just as good as the electric version? Well, I hope so, and that's what I'm ready to find out. So if that sounds good, then please keep watching. And if you like new car reviews and car content, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button. So if you was to compare this vehicle to the electric version, how would you know the difference? Well, if I was to cover this, you wouldn't really be able to tell a difference because they're almost identical. They have the same color options, same wheel options, but of course, where there was redundant space underneath the bonnet of the electric car, there's now an engine, and it's a pretty funky engine. Let me tell you about it. If you're not a Mazda enthusiast or a fan of Japanese sports cars, you may not be familiar with the rotary engine. Mazda is the only mainstream car manufacturer which has used the rotary engine in its mass-produced vehicles, such as the Cosmo, RX-7 and RX-8. Unlike traditional combustion engines with circular pistons, rotary engines have triangle-shaped rotors that spin around a central shaft. In this instance, it has a small 830cc rotary engine which produces 74 brake horsepower. Rotary engines are compact and lightweight, making them suitable for the integration into the electric motor in the MX-30. You see, it serves as a range extender for the plug-in hybrid system, providing energy for the electric motor which drives the front wheels. The REV, which this car is labelled as, has a 17.8 kilowatt hour battery, half the size of the all-electric car, and it can cover 53 miles on electric power alone. But with the rotary engine continuously recharging the battery, Mazda claims a total range of over 400 miles. More on that later as to whether I think that's realistic. The next thing really does seem to be Marmite. But do you know what? I love Marmite and it's the doors. Now I understand that if you are a family who's going to be carrying around children in the back often, this is not practical. Just like the electric car, it still has doors which open outwards. And that does mean to get into the back, you need to be able to open the front door. You can't open the back without opening the front. And yes, if you have kids that want to get in and out of this car often, it's going to be very annoying. I would almost say to the point where it's not really practical for families. But if you're a single person who mostly only carries one passenger, or it's mainly you most of the time like I am, I think this is brilliant. It makes it really, really easy for having access to the back. So if I've got shopping in the back, I can take it in and out. And I just kind of like it. It gives you a peek onto the interior, which is one of my favorite parts about this car. And it just feels different to other vehicles on the market. And different for me has always been a positive. What maybe isn't a positive is the space in the back. As you can see, there is not the most amount of room in the back. I do like the way you've got electric buttons on the back of this seat to be able to give you extra leg room, although it seems a little bit counterproductive because you haven't got it on the passenger side and surely that's the side that you need it because when the driver gets back in, they're obviously just going to put their seat back to their driving position and you're going to have limited leg room again. But it is handy if you want to load items into the back and you're just using it as a solo person. And I really do think that's the way that you have to look at this car. Look at the back seats as emergency seats. And for emergency seats, they're pretty comfortable. Everything's really good quality. I'm really impressed that you still get two cup holders and an armrest. And I've been using these cup holders as additional cup holders for the front. So when I've had more than two drinks, I've been putting them in the back as well. And I think that's the main way that you're going to use this car. I don't think for short journeys, smaller children are going to be more than happy. But if you're carrying adults often, this is not the car for you.
Mazda claims that 350 litres of boot space are available in the MX-30 REV. However, this does decrease to 332 litres if you have this top spec model with the larger audio system. I have always absolutely loved the interior of the MX-30. Sure, it's not the most practical, but it really does feel so high quality. I like the way on this model I've got dark leather. So I've got dark leather which runs along the exterior of the seats and also onto the armrests of the doors. And then you've got the mix of the grey material on the doors which is almost like a felt. That's recycled plastic bottles which I love. And then you've got tons of leather on the door cards all the way across the dashboard. Really nice leather wrapped steering wheel and I like the use of chrome as well. There's just so many textures and materials and I love that about this cabin. But ultimately, one of my favourite things about the interior of this car is the layout and just how logical it is and how much it makes sense. Now, it may not have the space of some other competitors like the Ionic 5, but what it does have is it's super user friendly. So this screen up here is not a touch screen. Instead, you control it using the dials in the centre. At first, you might think this feels a little bit backwards and not all that modern, but actually it's so easy to use and it's really good for when you're driving. You do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but unfortunately it's not wireless, so it will need to be wired. And you plug in your wires down here underneath the center console and down here you'll find two USB chargers, so no USB-C ports, which is a little bit of a shame. And it is a little bit fiddly to be able to get those wires in there, especially at night. There's also a three pin plug under there as well. Other storage sections, there's an armrest here with plenty of storage. And I also love the way that you can flip these little pieces of cork to either cover your cup holders or you can reveal your cup holders if you're going to be using them. Cork is very specific to Mazda. And the reason why they use cork is before they used to develop cars, they actually used to manufacture cork, which I think is quite cool. Now you may have noticed there's a second touchscreen. So you've got the main touchscreen at the top and you've also got this screen down here. Now this is dedicated for your climate control. It always stays as your climate control and you'll find features like your heated steering wheel, your heated seats. And again, that's really easy to use because it's literally within reaching distance and you barely need to take your eyes off of the road to be able to adjust it. In the little under a week that I've had this vehicle, I really have tested it quite thoroughly. So I've driven to and from the Cotswolds, not once, but twice. So for me, that's just under 500 miles. And I think by now with the short journeys I've been doing as well, I've done probably over 500 miles. So I've really put it to the test. And there are things that I like, really like actually, and there's things that I just find a little bit suspicious, which we'll talk about in a moment. Let's start with the good stuff, and that's how this car drives. So to put it shortly, the way that that rotary engine works is it charges the batteries that drive the car. So it drives very similar to other Hondas that I've tested and very much like an EV. So if you have a previous generation MX-30, which is the EV, then you might not notice a difference. And that's a good thing because this car is so comfortable and it's so enjoyable to drive. But you know what? It's also engaging. The steering is really well weighted. It's, it feels like a proper Mazda. It drives like a proper Mazda, which I know a lot of people will like. And that's the really good stuff. And arguably that's the most important stuff. It drives amazingly. But here's the things I'm a little bit skeptical of. Let's start with the power. So this is supposed to have around 170 brake horsepower. And being an EV or driving like an EV, it's very, very nippy in your kind of short bursts of power. So like now if I'm to put my foot down, it really feels quite quick. 
but that's when it starts to slow down and it's made me lose my confidence a little bit in this car because I've gone to take over people and realised that past the 0 to 30 it hasn't got much left and then I've kind of been struggling for power and realised that I look a bit silly because I'm taking over someone quite slowly which is a shame it doesn't feel slow it doesn't feel slow at all but it doesn't feel like it's got 170 brake I think it feels more like it's got around 130 which is a bit disappointing I guess the amount of miles that it has so they say that it can go up to 400 miles um, with the electric and the engine combined and it will do I think it's like 280 miles per gallon this I think um, no, it's, it's not exactly true at all, really. Um, it'll only do sort of 300 miles with the both combined. I've not seen more than 300 miles. And my mile per gallon figure has sat around 35 miles per gallon the entire time, which honestly, I do think is a bit of a disappointment. Now I say 35 miles per gallon, but I do also have a kilowatt per hour kind of reading as well which is 4.4 which is good actually why they don't combine those figures and give me a combined mile per gallon i have no idea because actually looking at a 35 mile per gallon figure doesn't seem that great but i've done some calculations and a full tank in this car is 60 pounds and that 60 pounds has been getting me 250 miles which if you know your cars that works out about 30 miles per gallon, which is not good. It really isn't good. And there's some strange things about it. Like when I put it in EV mode, um, even if I'm running it in sole EV mode like I am now, my fuel is still going down, which I don't understand. If it's running in electric alone, why is my fuel going down? I know that obviously you charge the battery using the engine, but I'm not doing that when I'm sitting in EV. It's supposed to be running in EV alone. So why is it dropping? I don't know. It's, it, and those figures in front of me, the um, fuel figure and the electric figure are so sporadic. They really do flit between going up and down and up and down. And it does recoup energy really quickly, which is a good thing. But is that because it's using a lot more energy from the engine, which is then costing me more? Probably. It's all just a little bit odd, but let's go back to the main goal of this car. And the main goal of this car is to be just as good as the MX-30, but with none of the range anxiety. And that is exactly what I get. It's so enjoyable to drive. It has all of the fantastic characteristics of the MX-30, but I don't have any range anxiety. I mean, I have fuel anxiety because I have to fill up more often than I was expecting to I was kind of hoping that I'd almost be able to do two journeys to the Cotswolds on one fuel tank so to only do half of what I was expecting that was a little bit disappointing but of course filling up fuel is is no problem at all you just nip down and it, and it only takes five minutes and that's ultimately the goal of this vehicle and that has taken that away I think the problem is is you can't now expect this to be a long range vehicle so it went from being a short range vehicle in the electric car of only doing around 140 miles to then changing to be what I thought was going to be a long range vehicle with this 400 miles. But you can't look at it like that. You have to look at it as it's still a short journey car. It's still the best for going to the shops and back, for going around town, for not doing super long journeys. However, you don't have to worry about range, which is a positive it's just not quite as economical as i had first hoped so sure the mazda mx30 plug-in hybrid is still not perfect but i think it is now more practical than ever before i loved it as an ev and it now means that you'd be able to live with it without worrying about having to charge every 100 miles I am a little bit disappointed about some of those figures. It's not quite as economical as I'd hoped, but if you're using it for short journeys, I think it's gonna be absolutely fantastic. I really think I'd be quite happy living with one of these cars, but let me know, what do you think of the MX-30? Put it in the comments down below. Do you think the plug-in hybrid has now made it more appealing to you? Make sure you let me know. If you have enjoyed the video, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button. 
Until next time, guys, see you later.